Hello, Aviation Operations students. We are going to uh, finish the third section on marketing, and that is marketing controls, things, specific details you need to think about, uh, such as pricing and distribution for how you are going to run your business and how you would market that as well. So let's go ahead and move on to that. So we go back to this picture again. Once again, you see young people. If you did not know who they were, that might give you one message. Uh, a couple people said a rock band. Um, but another, once you know that they are from the uh, Big Sky Aviation Camp for Young Adult Survivors of Cancer, that tells, sends you a different message. In addition, when this photo was first taken, Summit Aviation was just beginning their charter business and this was their first uh, phenom that they had to use for that charter business. So without fully launching that they were doing charter, they did have that aircraft in the photo to send a message as well. So there are multiple messages within this image and it can be set up as, hey, we do charter or it could be set up as, hey, uh, we're doing some community philanthropy because it's something that we believe in. So I wanted to first go over the homework that will be due, and it's taking us back to our history timeline that we build. I have a base, and then I added your input to it. So we have um, the aviation history timeline, and I have broken it into three specific periods. That is the 1800s and earlier, the 1900s, and the 21st century. So I'm asking you to look at things that happened during that time period, or if you find an event that's not in the timeline, you can use that Either way, you need to include your source. And so if you look at the homework assignment under content, the aviation history timeline is directly below it. So this is something that each person, each team member is going to have to do on their own, but it's okay for you to get together and brainstorm. And so what I'm expecting you to do is look at the history, pull something out that you can align with your business model and either a sketch or a sketch in words of an idea tying your business to this historical item. It should be promoting your proposed business in some way. So here is an example. Honest Abe's Balloon Tours. Abe Lincoln had the Union Balloon Corps. You have us, honest, reliable, and more than just a bag of hot air. So we have an image. Not a, we know someone who's very well known. Abe Lincoln and honesty are tied to each other. We have the Union Balloon Corps which was, <laughs> it was a Blinken's uh, Air Force used for military uh, reconnaissance and some other uses as well. And we add a little bit of humor. So this would be an example of what you would create. And now on to marketing controls. The first thing we'll look at is pricing. There's different ways to set up your pricing. You may do it all the same throughout your business or you may use different models within your business. So cost-based is what is the cost of the item and we add a percent to that. Um, and you have to also make sure you're covering all your costs, staff, facilities, marketing, insurance, everything has to be covered. 20% may be enough. 100% may not be enough. It's gonna depend on your business model. So you have to look at that. You wanna make sure that your markup times your volume that you're selling covers all your expenses and leaves some money over. Another is demand-based charging what the market will bear. And one thing to think about there is certain items at Christmas time can sell for uh, many times what they're worth when they're in short supply. So that demand based allows you to charge more. Price based, and this is observing the competition. What can you do to keep your price down or maybe keep your price point about the same as the competition, but add more value? Um, Perhaps you have the same price, but you'll help them install or you train them on something. So those are options you can consider there. And price elasticity. And this is where you're looking at a balance of supply and demand. You're looking at the market. Uh, you're changing the prices. And this requires uh, someone to be on top of that all the time. The others you can kind of set in place as a policy. Uh, price elasticity pretty much means you have to have someone assigned to making sure that happens. So again, one price or flexible prices. Are you willing to deal on something? Or do you have different prices for, say, people that are members of the Experimental Aircraft Association or people who are 
uh, past customers. Price level with respect to the market. And looking at the public life cycle, again, when an item comes out and it's brand new and it's Christmas time, people are willing to pay a whole bunch for it. A year later, when something else is the new hot thing, they're not willing to take as much. And do you roll with the cycle? Pricing product lines, you might have a bronze line that is a discount uh, version of whatever you're selling. You might have your gold line that is your uh, middle line that is a quality line, but not super expensive. And then you might have your platinum line that is much more costly and has added benefits. Um, and then promotional pricing policies. Uh, do you have promotions? Do you have sales? Um, do you work with other organizations? So for example, if you are retailing, your supplier may have pricing policies that you need to adhere to. But when they offer a rebate, are you going to pass that rebate along to your customers or are you not? Um, so many companies, for example, Lightspeed has a very strict policy on how you do that. If you are not following it, if you're not using the price points they set, if you're not passing the uh, rebates on to the customers, you will no longer be allowed to set, sell Lightspeed headsets. And then the general pricing questions. And this is applied, this list, as you go through it, is applied in two ways. You are looking at it both as a business buying product to sell or products to provide the services you're going to provide. And also how is your customer asking these questions and how do you fulfill their needs? What are you buying? Why? How? How do you decide what to spend? What are the options? And how are you going to pay for it? So you need to think about that again through two lenses, one as a business and one in thinking about your customers coming to you. How can you help them answer those questions? And think about that when you consider how you might structure your pricing. Are you going to help them with uh, potentially being able to uh, get financing so they can pay for it over time? What are some options that you would have for people to be able to buy your product or service? And place. We will come back to this when we go into facilities. But as they say, location, location, location. Do you need to be on an airfield? What type of airfield is the right one for you? In metropolitan areas, you can have hundreds to choose from. Are you on the correct location on the airfield? Do you want to be um, near the commercial uh, airport facility? Do you want to be away from it? Do you want to be on a road that's easily accessible or hidden around the backside? And then if you are in a bigger building, are you in the correct location in the facility or are the items you're displaying in the right place in your facility? An example, again, going back to Big K Carmel's, now you have all sorts of things uh, right at the cash register, not out on Iraq, um, but they were the first ones to do that here in the Valley and they built their business that way by having those Carmel's at the cash register. So location matters. And then distribution systems. Are you going to buy things on sale or at a volume discount and hold on to them? Or are you gonna buy just in time? So a lot of manufacturing lines now do just in time. But then when we do have uh, supply line disruptions as we've been having during this crisis, that can be an issue when all of a sudden you have people all ready to make or do something and you don't have the supplies you need. So you have to consider how you're gonna do that. And that may change depending on the circumstances. There are four primary channels of distribution. They're not the only ones, but they're the primary channels right now. And one example is direct customer from manufacturer. Cessna, if you wanna buy a Cessna airplane, you go and pick it up from the factory. That's the way it works. So you have to consider for your business, are you planning to be direct for, to the customer with you as the source, to customer with you as a retailer, or are you providing this to other businesses to be distributed? So again, you have to think about your pricing model, your distribution model, and anything else that needs to support it. And then promotion. How will you inform, persuade, remind potential customers about your business? It's even better if the communication is two-way. If you can establish a way to reach out to them that they can answer you and you can respond to them. Advertising, how will you target your marketing and what media will you use? And you need to have some way that you're monitoring that. Direct mail, as we talked about earlier, a uh, general direct mail list does not work for aviation. You need to develop targeted lists that you can use or purchase a targeted list um, for your direct mail because otherwise you'll have a very low rate of return. And referrals, those can be very important. 
They can be by word of mouth. Your reputation and ethics really met, matter. They can also be official referrals. You may have no other people who have businesses that are similar but aren't the exact same as yours. And so maybe they provide a service you don't, you refer to them, they refer to you. And then think about institutional promotion. Coke is an example of that. I'm sure you can think of other uh, brands where it's the brand they're promoting more than the specific product. And consulting is a promotional tool. I give an example here with aircraft sales. So you're gonna evaluate the client's pattern of travel, what they have been paying, what they are paying now, their future travel. And then you might look at cost of aircraft ownership or other alternatives, fractional ownership, other ways. Again, if you don't do fractional ownership and that turns out to be the best answer for them, you can potentially refer them to somebody. That group may not do whole ownership and so they may refer back to you. But you do have to remember, if you're doing consulting as a promotional tool, the answer cannot always be for, in this example, owning the airplanes that you're selling. If you are not truthful, there are perils. You won't last long as a consultant. Sales. Rule number one, listen to your customer. Some people will say the customer is always right, but that's not true. And we've seen a lot of cases recently where customers are being abusive to employees, and that is not ever a good thing. However, you still need to listen to your customer. You need to understand where they're coming from and that their needs are paramount and make them feel valued. However, that does not necessarily mean that they're right. And if they continue to uh, have poor behavior, you may ask them to leave. Alternatives, introducing alternatives. So they came in to buy this, but it isn't really a fit for them. Are there other things that are a better fit for them? Closing the deal. This is a step that often gets forgotten. Many people are really good at listening to the customer and finding something to match their need, but you need to close that deal. And, and not necessarily talking hard sell, but at some point you need to get them to make a decision. And if they can, to go ahead and sign that contract to make that sale. Once that's done, the next step is collecting. They get their product, you get paid. You can never forget that because you can't run your business. But that should not ever be where it ends. As part of your marketing scale, you need to follow up, to send a thank you, to send a survey. Rem remember the customer you already have is the best and least expensive. So getting a customer back, reminding them that you still exist, that costs resources. Getting new customers costs resources. If you have a customer and they have a good relationship with you, then that is the best customer you have. And they're also a good form of marketing in getting word of mouth out. So next week we'll be working on a marketing plan and you have to create a marketing plan. And once you put it in place, you have to ask yourself if it's working, how are you evaluating it? If you're using direct mail, what percentage are you getting back? Do you need to shift to a different mailing list? What needs to change to make sure that the money you're investing in marketing is giving you a good return? You also have to look at each of your products. What does each product contribute to the business? If you have a product with a small markup but high turnover, that may be what's bringing in the most money. Or you might have something that is a small turnover and has a high markup, and that's bringing in the, in the most money. But if you have something that's low markup and low turnover, why do you have that product? There are reasons to. One is a draw item. People expect you to have that item. And so you need to have it even if it doesn't sell well. Loss leaders is another example. So I think the best example I have for that is when I lived in California, there were five grocery stores in a one mile radius, not far from our house. But I had young kids and one of the grocery stores, when you walked in, you could buy an ice cream cone for 25 cents. And after work and the kids are hungry, letting them eat that, that uh, ice cream cone while you're shopping and getting things for dinner, boy, that made it nice. It made it easy to pick which grocery store I was going to. So you need to consider all these items as you complete your homework this week in thinking about ways to tie things into your marketing approach, but also looking forward to how you will be developing your marketing plan. Also performance evaluation. For example, when you're looking for an airplane, does it have a bigger payload, fly faster or higher? Is it more efficient? What are the needs and how does that fit with your business goals? Quality control. How can you guarantee a good experience? And things are going to wrong, be, go wrong. How do you handle it if something goes wrong? 
What does quality mean in your business? Does it mean that there's clean bathrooms? Does it mean things are on time? Or does it mean you have a red carpet and a concierge and somebody to carry their luggage? How are you measuring to make sure your quality standards are being met? And if they are not being met, how, what do you need to change? Budgeting. Are you spending enough or, not, or too much? Where are you spending your money and what is the return per dollar? Information systems, how are you gonna track this information? Are you asking customers uh, to fill out a survey that says where they heard about you? Or are you asking them when you come in and are you recording that someplace? So integrated marketing means you have your goals, your products and your market. You look at your tools and set your short and long range objectives. And then you have your system, the things that make it work, your schedules, your flow charts, your checklists, always checking back in with your short and long range objectives. Are you meeting those short range objectives that get you to your long range objective? Or are you missing them? Are, you th are there things that you're gonna have to change? Are you gonna have to change your product line? Are you gonna have to change your pricing? Are you gonna have to change your messaging? You have a long range objective, usually in a new business that's to get into the black, pay off your debts. How do you get there? We'll also be taking a look at a planning calendar. So are you gonna have some events or are there gonna be events at the, your airport that you can tie into? Are you working with a school and are certain events there that you can tie into and also promote as part of your marketing? So when you think about that, you are dependent if you're on an airfield on what's going on at that airport. You're dependent on the land use and zoning in and around the airport, available funding, public actions to protect airspace, support from and for the business community because you do need to tie into that community. And we'll be looking at the airport and what it does. You need to be aware of what's going on on that airport. But there are positive things as well, available funding. There may be some funding that helps you with something you're doing. And you can also take advantage of and tie into airport events or know that those airport events are not gonna tie into your business and that's probably gonna be a downtime for you. So you need that to know that for planning purposes. So as a summary, we look at being a successful manager and understanding that a marketing orientation is important. We need to think about that in everything we say and do, especially when it comes to our reputation. What are some successful, some important components of successful marketing? And how do you evaluate the effectiveness of your promotional activities? That is what you should have gotten out of these three sections of marketing. And that is the end of our coverage of marketing. So again, we have a homework assignment and we'll have some activities that tie into marketing next week as well. Thank you very much and have a good evening.